All right. We are um, doing pretty well. We are only an hour behind schedule, so I think that's doing pretty well, <laughs> considering the amount of uh, information that we covered and have to cover. Um, I, I'm going to try to keep up my pace so that we can formally finish at 6 o'clock, because there are probably people that have got to leave. But uh, once we get to 6 o'clock, we'll take a break, and then we will just continue and go into if you have questions that you want to talk about something more in depth, let me know, and uh, I will certainly do that. Page 22. I figure by this time, the uh, seriousness factor is a little bit high, and so I've uh, attempted to interject uh, a little bit of humor for comic relief. The, um, um, I have inserted something called a Bill of No Rights which I've uh, downloaded off the internet, and you've got a website there. Um, I am not responsible for it. I only wish that I were. But the uh, preamble to this Bill of No Rights says, We, the sensible of the United States, in an attempt to help everyone get along, restore some semblance of justice, avoid any, avoid any more riots, keep our nation safe, promote positive behavior, and secure the blessings of debt-free liberty to ourselves and our great-great-great-great-grandchildren, hereby try one more time to establish, ordain and establish some common sense guidelines for the terminally whiny, guilt-ridden, delusional, and other liberal, commie, pinko bedwetters. <laughs> and so it goes on to say what you do not have a right to. You do not have a right to be free from harm. If you stick a screwdriver in your eye, learn to be more careful. Okay? Do not expect the tool manufacturer to make you and all of your relatives independently wealthy, etc. So you can read that. I think that it's very humorous. And, uh, and sadly enough, you probably ought to post that for some people. Mm -hmm. you know? Now, the first ten amendments are special. They identify unalienable rights. And, you know, although Congress may go through the motion of amending them or you know eliminating them. They may as well just go ahead and shred the whole Bill of Rights. They can do that too, but it doesn't make it valid. Now, there are several additional amendments. The 11th Amendment, basically, uh, the, the U.S. judicial power is denied in cases against the state uh, so that states have a little bit more difficulty suing each other. Um, we looked at Article 2 that said the vice president is the guy with the second number of votes, second greatest number of votes. That was changed in 1804 by the 12th Amendment. Now, if you want to find out more about the Electoral College, go to uh, the 12th Amendment. It's a relatively long one. It has a lot of details about who can vote for what and all that other stuff. So that that is the process that is being used today. Now, um, the Thirteenth Amendment is a little bit more confusing. It depends on which Thirteenth Amendment we are talking about. Now, you and I know about the Thirteenth Amendment that says no slavery. Okay? Uh, that was established right after the war between the states. Now, it turns out that there was another 13th Amendment. Now, after, uh, uh, after George Washington was president, John Adams became president. While John Adams was president, the U.S. Congress secretly voted to give England about 600, I think it's 60 or 600,000 pounds of gold. Now, I don't know if that was physical pounds or British sterling pounds, but it was a lot of gold. I thought, we won the Revolutionary War. Why are we paying England all this gold? Why are Congress giving all this money in secret? Well, Benjamin Franklin's grandson happened to be a reporter. He found out about it, and he printed the story. What do you think the people at large thought about that? Were they happy? No, I think they had Pennsylvania Avenue filled with torches and pitchforks. They were a little bit upset 
and they wanted to, you know, dangle a couple of these uh, congressmen from a long rope. Well, John Adams said, well, we can't have that, and John Adams helped to pass the Alien and Sedition Act. Anybody ever heard of the Alien and Sedition Act? The Alien and Sedition Act made it illegal to print uh, nasty stuff about Congress, even if it's true. Don't you know? <laughs> this is the second president of the United States. We haven't even gotten started yet, and they're already putting up the Alien and Sedition Act. Well, Thomas Jefferson was our third president. Thomas Jefferson's first formal action was to eliminate the Alien and Sedition Act. You can't have freedom of speech and the Alien and Sedition Act. It's one or the other. And so he got rid of the Alien and Sedition Act. Now, they were starting to realize that Congress was being infiltrated by a bunch of lawyers. What does BAR stand for? When you take the BAR exam, what does B-A-R stand for? British Accreditation Registry. British Accreditation Registry. British Accreditation Registry. So these are the king's men. And when you become a lawyer, you get to put Esquire after your name. It's a title of nobility. Well, the founding fathers that were still around went, wait a minute, wait a minute, we got to put a stop to this. And they did the Titles of Nobility Amendment. And I won't read it in its entirety, but it is on page 23. And it basically says that anybody who has a title of nobility is not a citizen of the United States, which is basically state citizen, and that means that you can't be in Congress, because that's a mere prerequisite. So the title of nobility men would basically make it illegal for lawyers to be in Congress. Think about it. How many of our congressmen are lawyers? How many are not? Almost, yeah, how many are not? We can count those on one or two hands. So the title of nobility amendment was being ratified. And at the time, they would need 13 states to ratify it. Ten of the states ratified. They wrote in and said, yes, we vote for that. Then the War of 1812 broke out. Who were we fighting in the War of 1812? England. England. You know, the Revolutionary War wasn't good enough. they got to come back. Well, what happened during the, eight, the War of 1812? They burned down the White House where all of the records are kept. Son of a gun. There's a lot of strong evidence that leads to imply that the War of 1812 was specifically to prevent this 13th Amendment from being ratified. So now the War of 1812 is over. Congress gets back. Okay, where were we before we were so rudely interrupted? Oh yeah, we had this amendment. And three states didn't show up. You know, we didn't get their answer. Let's go get it now. So they write a letter to the president, say go out and find out what those three states said. There is documented proof that the President of the United States wrote and said, what was your answer? Now, there is no evidence that the states wrote back. However, because the states were now subordinate to the supreme law of land, every time the state would print the state laws, it seemed like a good idea to print the Constitution at the front page. That was the supreme law, all the state laws follow it. Now, you have two guys out in Maine, and they just do this research there, looking through all these old books. If you like that kind of stuff, fine. Now, when they take a coffee break, imagine them going, hmm, I wonder what the oldest book in the library is. And so they go, through, you know, running through all the shelves, and they find this old book, and they slide it off the shelf, and it's got all the dust, you know, and they blow it off, and here's the Constitution. You know, you got the Bill of Rights, and the 11th, 12th, and 13th Amendment. That doesn't look like no slavery. It looks like no titles of nobility. We've never heard of that before. So they started doing research and they found out that the title of nobility amendment was printed no less than 47 times between 1820 and 1860. Why would they print the title of nobility amendment if it hadn't been ratified? 